Greg, we uh, just finished off an awesome interview uh, talking about project management for renovations. Renovations obviously is a very key component to any fix and flip, to any fix and rent strategy. Uh, give me your take on your thoughts and some of the things that you're finding good investors do when it comes to renovating a property. Okay, cool. It's a great topic because I know that it scares more than anything else, more than the, the telephone call from the tenants, more than collecting rent from somebody who's behind. Renovations are the thing that scares and would-be investors the most and actually probably scares uh, experienced investors the most also. Um, and so it, the best thing about today is that that has been one of the biggest challenges in real estate since the beginning, mm -hmm. since like, you know, the cavemen built a house instead of a cave. Um, but it's getting so much better now because of technology and because of the need that the big investors, the folks that are our main clients, uh, at least historically have been, that own thousands of houses and are trying to wrestle this bear in a way that's efficient, in a way that they don't get ripped off by local contractors. It's the challenge, if you could think about what it would be like, you know, renovating the house that you live in and get, dealing with that. Now imagine you own 5,000 houses and you have to renovate them and it's really important you do it on budget and it's really important you do it on time. Um, and so that's the lessons that I'm starting to see that were learned by the big players that are now kind of being made available and the solutions being made available to everybody else, which is great news for everybody listening, has to do with this concept of renovation on demand and on the idea of upon acquiring a property. Like I'm a big believer, by the way, of buy houses that are in good condition. Like unless you really need to make an outsized return in the near term on a property, I meet so many investors that their goal is to retire someday with income. Right? Their goal is over the next 25 years, I want to build a portfolio of real estate. Not build it physically, build it by accumulating some real estate so that someday I have enough income to, to live on and to thrive on and I'm totally independent and if they don't pay my social security, it doesn't matter. Like all those kinds of things. So long-term stuff. And then they, then they go and they read a book on investing or they listen to a podcast or go to a seminar and they come out with this idea that they have to go find a steal. They have to go find a house that totally needs to get renovated and it's a junker and it's this weird sort of myopic view of real estate investing that investing in houses means flipping or investing in houses means buying a junker and fixing it up. Now, it might surprise you to know that we sold, what did we sell, 4,000 houses over the last two years mm -hmm. and the average renovation, you ready? The average renovation of the houses we sold in the last two years to large clients was around 4,000 bucks. Okay, four thousand bucks basically gets you a paint job and a carpet clean. <laughs> That's right. right. That's, <laughs> That's about right. it. Right? That's it. <laughs> so, and you know what our discount to market price was? In other words, what we ended up having those clients pay, what we paid on behalf of those clients for those houses, was ninety-seven percent of market value. So, large Wall Street behemoths are paying market value for houses, and they're buying things that are in practically perfect condition. They just want to freshen them up. Why? Because the, the question of how do you renovate 5,000 houses nationwide is you don't, <laughs> right? <laughs> just, right. just <laughs> you, you don't. You just buy something somebody already renovated. So I want to introduce that concept first to your audience, this idea that if, you're, if the idea of getting your own kitchen renovated causes you to break out in hives, then maybe this, that's not the right approach for you. Maybe the best move is to buy something in good condition. Having said that, the people that do renovate, when they purchase a property, they have it inspected by somebody who knows not just how to do an engineer inspection. Like you, when you buy a home to live in, you get an engineer inspection on the house to make sure the, the, the foundation is sound and the roof is sound, et cetera, et cetera. When you get a, a, an inspection on an investment property, you're going to want to send somebody in who can actually give you a scope of work. Like this house needs the following things and it's going to cost the following amount of money to do each of those things. And if the house is occupiable, or in the case of everything that we sell on ownamerica.com, it's already occupied by a renter. So by definition, it's occupiable because it's occupied. Right. Um, that's the kind of thing where if this house needs $12,000 worth of renovation, let me s schedule that out. 
so that I can set the money aside month by month now. I know I'm probably going to need a new air conditioning system in two years. What's that going to cost me? $5,000. How much do I have to set aside per month out of my rental income to have the money for the AC in two years? Schedule it. So some of the technologies and techniques that the big guys use out of necessity have to do with find out what you're getting, decide. It's not a matter of if you're going to do it. It's a matter of when you're going to do it. So decide when you're going to do it and begin to save for that, set aside for that over time, and then literally get it scheduled. If I know I have to do an AC in two years, I may not jump all over the idea of finding an AC contractor today, but it's not going to take me by surprise. What you don't want is the phone call July 4th weekend. I have a house full of family and I'm having a barbecue and the AC just broke because that's, that's right. when it breaks, when that's it's 98 right. degrees and humid. So get it ready. Get your people ready. Do as much of this, and that's the point, Abby. do as much of the preparation for the renovations up front, the setting aside of the resources for the renovations up front. And then when they happen, you'd be surprised at how little of a pain in the neck it really is. You're basically making a phone call saying, okay, Fred, it's go time, replace the AC. Okay, Hal, it's go time, time to paint that kitchen, tear out those cabinets, whatever. A lot of people do it when the rent turns. So meaning when a tenant is moving out, their lease is up in April, I'm going to make a plan that come April, I'm going to send somebody in to do some of this work. And by the way, I'm going to ask my tenant, if you want to renew, um, we're going to be fixing the kitchen up. So the $1,000 a month rent is going to be $1,075, but you get a new kitchen out of it. It's all about getting out ahead of it, right? Making the plans for it, scheduling it, and then just letting it, you know, when the, when, the, when the flag drops that it's time to do the renovation, you go ahead and do it. You have the money, you have the plan, you have the contractor. No big, no big pain point there. That's right. One of the things, too, that technology is starting to serve us uh, in a greater capacity for is these... Uh, Let's say your HVAC system, right? You can you can put a piece of tech in your HVAC system that will constantly monitor the health of it. And imagine right. now, if you are now pre- you're you're putting together this preventative care, right? Prevention right. is better than care all the time. So you might as well start preventing some of the stuff from going bad, some of these units from going bad so that you don't have to be burdened with a crazy HVAC cost later down the road. Like you said, do as much of you, as much of these repairs as you can up front and then see what tech you can implement to then alert you before any type of catastrophic, catastrophic event with these units. It just makes sense. Surveillance. They call it surveillance. Surveillance. Thank you for that. in In the business of foreclosures where big banks own lots of houses that are vacant, they, um, that technology in a lot of ways was developed for houses that were vacant. So people can put technology in place. In fact, invitation homes, that is the largest landlord of residential homes in America owned by Blackstone, massive company, gets some good press, gets some bad press. They get picked on a little bit. Um, smart people, they just announced that they, I think it was their 30,000th smart home they've installed. So they're rapidly installing these things because they've got tenants in place. Tenant, tenant in the house is the best surveillance, yeah. right? Like when that phone rings, I have news for you. When the phone rings and someone says the water is leaking in the bathroom, you don't get annoyed. You get happy because there are tenants that won't even tell you. And when they don't tell you, you find out the water's leaking when there's mold in the house and it's a much more expensive renovation. So they're installing this smart home technology, surveillance, get notification from the technology that the systems in the house are failing, that they need maintenance and so forth. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention, but I never got to it, I'll make it quick, yeah. is the on-demand. Okay, A company oh, called yeah. Homey On Demand. Some friends of mine, they just raised more money. They're basically tackling this idea that Um, When you want to get some work done, instead of like when you want to get an Uber, you look on your app and you see what drivers are around nearby and available now. Well, um, uh, Homey is making it so that you can look down and see what contractors are nearby. I have work to do in an electrical capacity or I have a plumbing job. What plumbers are on the road nearby right now? I can order the job. They come and they do it now. That's That's an awesome development. That's right. Home automation and ensuring that you're taking care of these units, your roof, your HVAC, your plumbing, your electrical, this type of stuff is handled before you buy or as close to before you put a renter in, it will save you thousands of dollars down the line. 